Hello everybody. Welcome to my channel. And it's good to be back. Yes. Uh, this article is a little bit sad on my part. The ongoing story of a Texas dad, Jeff Younger's fight to protect his young son from the risk of a gender reassignment in California took a bad turn on Friday. The Texas Supreme Court denied his petition to prevent his ex-wife from taking the boy to the Golden State, where a new state law directly threatens his health. The custody battle between Younger and his ex-wife, Dr. Ann Gorgulas, Gorgulas, here we go again, I'm back, ain't I? G-E-O-R-G-U-L-A-S, <laughs> Gorgulas, over their twin sons has been going on for several years. He has claimed that their mother, I gotta scroll down here, uh, let's see, he has claimed that their mother, a pediatrician, has used the children to help her advertise her exclusive gender affirming medical practice involving kids. Younger tweet after the court issued the order denying his petition. The Supreme Court of Texas denied my ma mandamus, I guess that's how you'd say that, mandamus, effectively terminating my parental rights. My children are now subject to being chemically castrated in California. He went on to criticize Texas as an empire of child mistreatment. The state Supreme Court orders follows. An order entered into October by Texas Judge Kim Cooks, which ordered that the parents should have joint managing conserv conservatorship over their children, with each parent entitled to have a say in his, or hers, I would say, medical treatment. Younger has filed his petition with the Texas Supreme Court on December 16th after Georgulas took the children with her to California. In his petition, Younger argued that his sons would be placed in danger of permanent life-altering gender reassignment procedures and medications due to a new California state law that went into effect on Sunday, January the 1st. The new California law says its state's courts <clears throat> must prohibit the enforcement of an order based on another state laws, state law authorizing a child to be removed from their parent or guardian based as that parent or guardian allowing their child to receive gender affirming health care or gender affirming mental health care. Younger asked the Texas High Court to return his children to him. He argued that the mother has indicated that one of her sons would be subjected to transgender procedures deemed to be the child mistreatment by official opinion of the Texas Attorney General. The Texas State Legislature, Legislature has passed laws prohibiting procedures and medications designed for the medical gender transition of children and teens. The Texas Attorney General filed an amicus brief, A-M-I-C-U-S, amicus brief, that the Texas Supreme Court on December 22nd is support of Younger. That brief argued that the trial court clearly misused its discretion by allowing the mother to take the children to California and that the error may be irremendable on appeal because California has enacted a law that makes it difficult, not impossible, for a relator to regain custody of his valuable child. The Texas Supreme Court found that the new California law does not pose a threat to the child and denied the petition. I mean, for heaven's sakes, can't you imagine what that poor father's going through? 
I don't know. My opinion only. But that's not right. He should have got custody of, of that child to prevent that from happening to that child. What is wrong with Texas law when it comes to children? When the parent is begging, don't let this happen to my child. Don't they care? Oh well, here we go again. Okay. I'm going to try another one here. Uh, I'm kind of going backwards on my list here. I have, you know, several. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, <clears throat> I thought this was very interesting. And uh, I was happy to read this one. Texas Border Fencing defends El Paso from expected border eclusions. The Texas state government is preparing for the prospective end of Title 42 and the resulting wave of additional illegal <clears throat> migration it would bring. I'm sorry. Uh, Governor Greg Abbott, Republican, has directed the Texas National Guard to install two miles of new border fencing near El Paso and is planning on adding more. Hooray! That's what I say. <laughs> Title 42 is the border security public health order adopted by President Donald Trump at the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. A federal court order provided that enforcement of Title 42 was to end last week. However, the Supreme Court agreed to take the matter up and ordered that Title 42 remain in place pending its final decision. Always got to be a fight. When some good comes along, somebody's got to try to knock it down. Isn't that the truth? Reports has indicated that thousands of illegal migrants were huddled <clears throat> at the Mexican side of the southern border in anticipation of lifting Title 42. As many as 20,000 migrants were gathered near the El Paso ports of entry at the time. Abbott was told reporters... Abbott has told reporters that border crossings near the two ports of entry where the new barbed wire fencing has been installed have plummeted. A spokesman for the Texas National Guard said this week that more fencing is expected to be installed before the end of Title 42 enforcement. As the deadline for the Title 42 enforcement approached in December, El Paso's Mayor Oscar Lesser, L-E-E-S-E-R Lesser, reported that shelters on the Mexican side of the border were completely full. Inside El Paso, um, the city government opened up its convention center and some school buildings to house migrants who had already flooded the U.S. side of the border. Reporting last week also indicated that a huge temporary tent structure was being sent up near El Paso in anticipation of the wave of migrants expected when Title 42 ended. The tent facility is designed to operate as a processing center for overflow migrants. Security guards there told reporters that the tent could be used for a few weeks, six months, we don't know. The Central Processing Center for the Migrants in El Paso has a standard capacity of only 1,400 persons with a maximum number breaking point of 5,000, according to Deputy, Deputy City Manager Mario D'Agostino. Ooh, I hope I pronounced that one right. That's a pretty name. Lesser added on Friday that the city is prepared for things to get worse. See, what did I tell you? Before it gets better. Good always has to put up a fight. Now to me, that just brings up so many questions. What's wrong with doing good than trying to fight for the bad? Let me know. I mean, it's just something else. Alrighty, let's go <clears throat> 
to the next one here. Uh, this one here is kind of nerve-wracking, but violence breaks out at AOC endorsed drag event. And I emphasize on drag because so you all understand what it's talking about. I'm sure you do. 2022 saw a sharp spike in provocative events hosted by dragged performers geared toward audiences of all ages, specifically and most controversially aimed at children. While supporters say these are important opportunities to introduce young people to alternative lifestyles, Critics warn that they expose kids to mature themes and inappropriately explicit behavior. Well, I should think so. Now they're trying to destroy our children. For her part, U.S. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, <coughs> excuse me, Democrat New York, has repeatedly made it clear. <coughs> I am so sorry. <clears throat> which side of the cultural debate she supports. Ahead of a drag story hour at a library in Queens, the far-left lawmaker shared a post calling on the public to protect the event's organizers against violently loud bigots who might show up to protest. According to the library statement, queer community members and allies will be there <coughs> I don't know if I'll be able to finish this or not. <coughs> I'm sorry. So sorry. <coughs> Still got a little problem there. But it's getting better. <coughs> uh, members and allies <coughs> will be there to show the fastest they are not welcomed. But that kids and drag queens are. Let's show NYC's unwavering support for Drag Story Hour and for queer and trans people and make a safe, encouraging, and joyful welcome for kids and their grown-ups as they enter the library. <clears throat> After using her platform as a public figure to amplify the reach of this post and interest in Thursday's event, protesters and counter-protesters arrived at the library and clashed. <clears throat> this was not the first time that such a kind of controversial event ended in a brawl. In October, Eugene, Oregon Pub invited a preteen to perform in drag, sparkling backlash from the community. Reports indicate the demonstrators on both sides of the issue resorted to throwing projectiles at each other. In this case, the call by the controversial congresswoman to defend the event by showing up to it simply to imply something more than simply supporting it. And some of those who responded to the call were reported to have brought weapons in this event organized for children. <clears throat> it is relevant that the New York Democrat was quick to call out her political revival for allegedly inciting violence with the social media uh, Mimi he posted in November of 2021. M-E-M-E. -E -M -E. I say Mimi. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. <clears throat> Responding to a video that portrayed her as a carton character being defeated. Ocasio-Cortez called for action against Representative Paul Gosar, represent Republican of Arizona, declaring what I believe is unprecedented is for a member of a House leadership of either party to be unable to condemn incitement of violence against a member of this body. What is so hard about saying this is wrong? Gozar was subsequently censored and stripped of his committee assignments, something we are unlikely to see in the situation that ended with actual violence from her supporters. <clears throat> You know, um, I don't have anything to say um, about the lifestyle that people choose. Um, we all 
are born with male and female cells. That's not the right word I wanted to use, but that's what we're born with. Okay? Because that decides whether we're going to be a male or a female. Now, growing up, they have a choice. Now, some have, have chose the wrong way to go after they thought they were maybe a female wanting to be a male. And a lot of them that have had these surgeries uh, have tried to change back to being the way they were born. And sometimes I don't know if that works. But everybody has a right to choose their lifestyle. No matter what it might be. And I need to look at the camera again. <clears throat> uh, but to draw innocent children that the parents have not talked to and may not know what's going on is wrong in my book. If the parents have sat down the child, if they're probably six years old on up, you know, and explain to them that it's their choice what they want to choose as a grown-up to contribute to society, you know, then it's that child's decision. If they get a little bit older, you know, they might think, well, you know, I don't feel, say, a little male or a teenage male that he don't like girls, that he would rather, you know, have more friends, male friends than girls, or vice versa. But it should be their choice of the lifestyle they want to live when they reach a certain age. It should not be pushed on them. That's wrong. I don't care. And for somebody to open up a deal and say, it's okay now to bring your young children in and we'll, we'll teach them what kind of lifestyle they want to live. No. No. That's wrong. I'm sorry. That's wrong. But anyway. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I will do another video. Maybe later. I've got to get my medicine. But um, I want to wish everybody a very happy, happy new year. And I pray you had an awesome, awesome Christmas. And you were with your loved ones as much as you could be, you know. And also on New Year's. And this uh, new year of 2023, the reports aren't good. But I tell myself, don't pay attention to it. Because we're going to make it good for us, if we possibly can, without the government reaching their hand into our pocket and pulling out what we were gifted with the cola rays. But, you know, that story has got so moldy for years and years and years. There's going to be something that is going to dip into our pockets and take away that cola rays. You can count on it. Am I wrong? Let me know. But anyway, make it the best that you can make it. And I always say God bless. Make your prayers really strong. Jesus will hear them. And that always reminds me when I say that, of that song sometimes, what is it, unanswered prayers? I can't remember the lyrics. No, but it's a beautiful song. But I'm going to say so long for now and not sure if I'll be back. But I'll try tomorrow. Okay? And God bless. And you are special. And you can make a difference. Bye.